let's establish half guard. What is half guard? Right, half guard is anytime I have one of his legs between my my legs. Because of the ways that we get into it, either that I, you know, elbow escaped from mount, or I elbow escaped from side mount and only got halfway done, uh, or he failed to step over from side mount. You know, there, there are a few ways that we could end up in this position, um, but this is pretty much what it's going to look like. And I'm going to somehow hold on to his leg. If I ever don't, uh, he can take side mount. Boom, done. By far the easiest is going to be to drape the inside one. I actually don't need to cross my feet now even to have a good grip. Like this is enough. So we're talking today about a guy who's going to have two knees on the floor, control of my head, and control, an underhook control on, on this arm is what he wants. But we're going to say that I, I got it, I fought for it, and I got the underhook. Now I can bridge and it does something, I can like move this guy. And when he has the underhook, I'm way more pancaked. Like I'm like part of the move today is going to be getting on our side. So hold me down. So me getting on my side, even the good way, um, is way, way, way harder. Today we're talking about I have the underhook. That's substantial. What the underhook affords me is like a, a way out. Think of it this way. This is a door and my arm is the first part of me. I got through the door. And I want to get the rest of me through there. So if there's any question, oh, which, which, which way am I supposed to go? Or, or, or I'm not sure why these steps are here. It's all just to go through or wedge open or fit through the door. Turning on my side is sort of the, the, the step that's going to get this whole thing going. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk this foot away from him. So I have the inside leg draped. And up the outside foot, I can heel toe away, heel toe, heel toe. And just with a little bit of pressure, like reaching kind of pressure, I'm not trying to push him. Certainly with my hand, I won't be strong there. But if I kind of reach for the ceiling a little bit, I'll create space between our chests that allow me to walk this foot out, turn on my side a little bit, right? And when you get on your side, again, don't get lazy with this, because again, he'll step over. So I have a little grip here, but now that I'm on my side, you know, can you turn back and put your chest on my chest? Like not really because this arm is underneath. I can keep his head on this side of me. So I'm not only am I on my side, but I, I've got him beside me now. And now I want to bring him over my head. So I do that with this arm and with my knee at the same time. If I don't get on my side, my knee isn't very effective under his butt. But if I do get on my side, it is. Like I'm right, I fit right in this nook here. And I'm gonna use this and this to bump him overhead. And it might just mean that his weight goes from his knees to his elbows, but what it does is it clears a space over here for me. So you don't, don't expect to knock the guy over here and, and don't be knocked over if you're the uki. Just, you know, he just comes forward a little bit and that gives me room with this leg to kick down, pop my head out. And then, and then lastly, to keep my, uh, to get base when I'm beside him, I'm gonna put this knee outside of his knee. Well, basically I'm gonna get off my hip and onto my knee. And since this knee is an important part of my base this way, I don't want it like this because now I need my hand to hold me up. So put the knee out until you have two hands free. So when I first kicked down and got up, I was on my hip. When I got up to my knee, uh, I no longer needed my hands on the ground. That's how, that's how well based I'm gonna be on this leg. But you'll notice that my foot is actually still in here. I'm leaving it in here for now. So I'm on my side. Inside leg is draped over. That's, that's easier than this. This is like a bit of a twist in the wrong direction for me. Inside leg is draped over and the outside leg walks out until I can, with a little bit of reaching pressure back into his chest, I can create some space underneath. And now I'm gonna bump him with my knee in the butt. And by raising my hand like I have a question or opening my elbow, I bump his shoulder girdle. Now there's space to kick out and down. I come up, I'll hold his waist and I'll post my knee until I can pick this hand up and I'm ready to go from here. And that's the first, that's the first few steps that we will do today. So let's do those first. Three, two, one. When I get up, I'm going to put this arm, uh, I'm going to put a seatbelt on him. It's the arm that reached across his waist that's going to go under his arm. And then I'm going to connect myself really well to his body. Connect the center of my chest to the center of his back. 
That's a big important piece you'll hear me say a lot when we do the back. The center of my chest connects to the center of his back. And I'm gonna roll over this corner. Then my second hook goes in, and now I've taken the back, which is a dominant position, like our most dominant position, and I have all the things I need, a full harness and one, two hooks. Don't cross your feet when you get here. You actually do want the uh, pinky side edge of your feet in contact with the inner thighs. Think about what I was saying with the door. My arm is the first thing through the door. Every step is only about getting the rest of me through a small door, small closing door. So I'm gonna bump him up, get down to get up, and now I'm gonna get him. Like this. Center of my chest, on the center of his back. The over, the one that goes over his neck is near me. The far side is the one that goes under his, under his arm. And then I'm just doing this, hugging hugging and then fall to this corner right here the one that my knee is pointing at fall this way and i put this foot in he brings his knee up to his chest to make it harder to put in there just retract your foot and he should be able to stomp in and now i've got the back it's possible that person lands on me too much when we roll across and that's not good that's not good sometimes when you pop out of here and you attach and you're ready to go. If I try to fall too much sideways, he has too much base. Right? He has this knee sticking out like a nice kickstand, and maybe even his elbow, uh, depending on how high off the ground he is, he might have his elbows out further. So pulling him sideways is gonna be a no-go, especially if you're smaller than your opponent. But what you can do is, you can put your weight on this shoulder, and you're gonna try to fall a little more north than, than like east. But what happens is when I, when you really get it is when my weight goes on this shoulder and I make his shoulder come forward of his elbow, like that. That's when he's gonna go. That's the moment he's gonna go. So when I'm here, I really wanna get his shoulder to collapse forward and then put this hook in. So try that when you have trouble from this pigeon pose kind of position. When you have trouble getting your guy to fall over, it's just, see if he can collapse his shoulder forward of his elbow here with your weight because mm -hmm. that's almost a uh, like I was saying it's almost like an asymmetrical one arm push up for a guy and to do that with someone else's weight on them all their weight right behind that shoulder is too tough so you will get everybody to fall uh, that way and it does also process solve the problem of sometimes we take their back and then we keep rolling because essentially what was happening when we saw that problem probably was that they sort of pole vaulted over this arm where you fell to the corner, but they, they, if I do this, I already have this momentum when I fall from my elbow to my shoulder sideways, but when you crush it forward, I can really only roll over my bicep. So I won't go as far. So you won't get as much sideways motion as you got when you took somebody down that way. So it, that little movement probably troubleshoots both the guy rolling across your body problem but and the, I can't get him to fall over for me. And I escape and come up. If I keep my head down, down here at the horizon of his body, so my arms draped over his right waist, and I can see, I can see across here. I'm gonna take advantage of the, the view that I have, and I'm gonna grab his knee and drive in with my body weight, collapsing his leg kind of the way we collapsed his shoulder in the last one. When he falls over here, I'm gonna step back around his legs and take the top of the side out. I've gotten up, I'm gonna hold his waist. I look across, I see his knee. I'm gonna drive in, collapse him over, step back around his legs, and come around behind him, okay? So once I've gotten up, I don't get up very high. I don't get up here. I keep my view across underneath for his knee, and then I just tap his knee, call it a knee tap, collect his knee here, and then drive him over till he falls, step off, and then come behind him here for a side mount. Let's try it. Three, two, one.